Good afternoon, we will continue our discussion on ICNG and gas turbine and today we will discuss about the you know engine friction and we will discuss about the forces which are acting on the piston and then uh, of course, friction, frictional force will be there and to reduce the frictional resistance we need to supply lubricating oil and therefore, we need to know what are the different lubrication systems. Uh, typically used for the internal combustion engine operation. So, before we go to discuss about the engine frictional you know friction rather frictional resistance inside the engine cylinder and to reduce the frictional resistance uh, lubricating oil is you know provided, but before we should before we go to discuss those aspects we should know what are the different forces acting on the engine cylinder and from there we will try to know if we really need, if we need to reduce the uh, you know frictional effect then of course uh, what are the different ways of uh, you know lubrication lubri uh, lubrications then we will discuss so first we will discuss about the you know forces acting on the piston and to know what are the different forces acting on the piston, uh, just I will try to draw on schematic. From the schematic depiction, you had, in fact, we have discussed uh, in our previous classes that uh, during the you know power stroke, of course, that is the you know uh, that is represented by the you know uh, isentropic expansion process, but power stroke is only the stroke where we are getting power from the engine. And now, uh, because of the combustion we have understood that heat energy is generated and that heat energy you know is uh, used to create thrust on the piston face and because of what piston moves or the piston travels from top dead center to the bottom dead center. So, we will now draw one schematic depiction. Uh, of the engine cylinder from there we will try to discuss the different forces acting on the piston face. So, this is top dead center and this is bottom, bottom dead center and piston Uh, which is you know so this is you know crankshaft and this is crank this is known as connecting rod that we have studied in our undergraduate machine design courses mechanism courses. Now, this connecting rod that is a rod which is you know connecting crank with the piston and uh, the reciprocating motion of the piston is converted to the rotary one using this crank and connect connecting rod mechanism. Now, so we have understood that at the end of the compression stroke uh, if it is spark ignition engine then pressure and temperature uh, of the comp uh, compressed charge you know is high and at that condition at that thermodynamic state uh, if we ignite the charge of course, the compressed charge using spark plug that we have discussed that to reduce the to break the spark gap we need high voltage, but using 10 volt a 12 volt to 24 volt battery uh, using that battery ignition you know circuit we can uh, develop that high voltage which is required to break the spark gap. Now, if you using the spark plug we can ignite the compressed charge. So, the compression process itself increases the pressure and temperature of the charge which is nothing but air fuel mixture and at the end of the compression stroke we switch on the spark plug which is used to ignite the total charge and tot the total combustion takes place. 
and because of this combustion essentially the chemical energy is converted into the heat energy and that heat is used to create rather because of this heat energy the temperature and pressure of the combustion gases will be you know increased and because of this increase in the pressure a thrust will be acting on the piston face and that is the force acting on the piston and that is what is very important to know and because of that force we are getting power output from the engine cylinder. And if we try to recall that for the 4 stroke cycle SI or CI engines there are 4 different strokes that we have discussed many times uh, intake then compression power and the exhaust stroke. But out of these 4 different strokes only power stroke is the stroke from where we are getting energy or uh, and, re and remaining 3 strokes are the ideal strokes and for for to execute these 3 strokes we need to supply energy from the flywheel. So, essentially this power stroke is very important and to know the power output of course, we have discussed that the power which is uh, I mean the energy or other power which, which we are getting at the piston face is not the power which we are getting at the crankshaft of course, because of this uh, of course, uh, there will be uh, different losses mechanical losses and but but at least if we know the force which is acting on the piston face and then considering the parasitic loads and also the frictional effect we can at least calculate what is the you know power available at the crankshaft this is the engine cylinder so this is the piston face and uh, the force is acting on the piston face so if i now try to draw the schematic once again. We have discussed that during the you know uh, uh, combustion process rather almost throughout the power stroke both the valves are remaining closed. So, as if if I try to draw this is a closed pressure vessel uh, during the stroke. So, during that particular stroke uh, during that particular moment we can consider the cylinder is acting just like a pressure vessel and and piston. So, this is top dead center and this is bottom dead center and piston will have a reciprocating mom, you know motion between these two location. Now, Mm, this is the piston and you know or I can say uh, fine. So, this is the piston and it will rotate it will rotate like this. And if I try to draw the rather if we try to connect the line connecting between this crankshaft and the point where connecting rod is you know the rod is connecting with you know rod is connected with the piston then and if we try to if we consider the coordinate system like y and this is x then we need to know what are the different forces acting on the piston face of course thrust will be developed thrust will be generated because of the combustion process but as i said that the net force which is acting on the piston face is not available at the crankshaft because of the frictional losses and other parasitic loads. So, to know at least the uh, I mean the force which is acting for in an x direction because the force acting in the x direction is responsible for the movement of the piston in the x direction. So, you now if I and if you consider the pressure inside the gas. So, you know because of the combustion the uh, the combustion uh, inside the cylinder uh, uh, pressure will be higher and if we consider that P is the pressure P is the pressure inside the cylinder or gas pressure inside the cylinder. Now, Knowing the if we consider pressure that is of course, uh, developed because of this combustion process then 
if we need to know what are the different forces acting in the x direction which is responsible for the moment of the piston in the x direction then what are the different forces say this angle is theta this angle is theta theta is basically this theta is basically angle between connecting rod and center line of the cylinder. Right and say this angle phi that is the crank angle and phi is the crank angle. So, at this particular instant where the piston and the you know connecting rod as well as the crank location is represented by the schematic. If we try to calculate the net force acting in the x direction and what are the net force acting in the y direction, then that will give us the you know give us an information about the uh, I can say the total power that will be available on the piston face and from there we can calculate what will be the power at the crankshaft. Okay. So, now uh, I mean we can see that when piston is having continuous movement between these two centers that is top dead center and bottom dead center. So, when piston is coming from TDC to BDC frictional force will be acting that frictional force will try to resist the motion of the piston that we know and again when piston will travel back from BDC to TDC uh, the frictional force will also act against the piston movement and that is the frictional force is always there and we need to know the direction and the direction is straightforward. Now, if we try to calculate what are the net force acting on the piston phase then uh, again if we go back to the previous slide. So, this is the uh, you know these are the now you know say the force that will be acting on the connecting rod. So, say this is F r and uh, the frictional force that will be acting you know in the direction opposite to the direction of the piston movement and if that is F t. So, this is the frictional force. So, if I write um, in the next slide F t is the frictional force frictional force and F r that is the force on the connecting rod, force on the connecting rod right. Then if we try to calculate if I go back to the slide, so crank is rotating in the clockwise direction. So, this is crank rotation is shown in the figure. So, crank rotation shown in the figure. Now, so we can see from the schematic that uh, piston movement is the, the piston movement will be guided by the by the walls of the cylinder now rather by the wall of the cylinder. Now question is but 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 it will have only the reciprocating movement. So, we can say that the net force acting in the y direction will be definitely 0 because there is no resultant force acting in the y direction that will be restricted by the cylinder walls. Now, but we will have net force which is acting in the x direction. So, if I try to calculate, so this y direction is you know uh, radial direction of the piston, radial, di radial direction of the uh, cylinder. Now, uh, if we try to force balance in the x direction,
because there is no resultant force acting in the y direction piston will be thrust will be there side thrust will be there but but uh, that will need to calculate but uh, that will be compensated by you know the thrust bearing but radial also axial thrust will be there but that is in the x direction but now because there is no you know lateral movement of the piston that will be uh, uh, you know restricted I can say not restricted that would be there is no radial movement of the piston, but the force will be there in the x direction for which you will have the axial movement. So, the force balance in the x direction will give. So, the net force acting on the x direction. So, net force acting in the x direction. is equal to the I can say from the Newton second law of motion that is nothing but m into d v p by d t where v p is equal to piston speed and d v p d t that is the piston acceleration. right. So, this is the VP is the piston speed and DVDT is the piston acceleration. So, now the we can write that is m d v p d t is equal to summation of f x right. So, where m of course, we need to know that is mass of the piston. So, what are the you know different forces acting in the x direction? If we go back to the you know previous schematic, we can see that uh, there will be component of the force rather acting on the connecting rod. So, the force acting on the connecting rod rather force on the connecting rod will have two different components. One will be in the radial direction, another will be in the axial direction. And while we are you know talking about acceleration in the x direction then resist in you know, a frictional force that is the resistance offered by the frictional uh, effect we also need to consider. So, if we write this equation one step further uh, then we will get that m d v p by d t will be equal to summation of f x that is nothing but. So, what are the net force acting on the piston? Uh, so, we can say frictional resistance by frictional force and the component of the force acting on the connecting rod and of course, which is very important that the you know forces due to gas pressure on the piston phase. The forces due to gas pressure acting on the piston phase is responsible for the acceleration. So, we need to know what will be that. So, that is nothing but you know if I know P is the gas pressure that we have uh, uh, mentioned. So, this is into pi by 4 into you know uh, uh, board diameter square. So, this d square where d is board diameter cylinder board diameter plus uh, if we now write this fr, so fr basically this is the force fr and this angle we have taken theta. So, it will have two different components, two different components one is fr sin theta other one is f r cos theta. So, that is f r cos theta uh, minus of course, because at force will be in the I know uh, we can say our direction is y this direction and this is x direction. So, that will be minus and and plus or minus f t that is we really do not know because this force is 
uh, always against the piston movement that is what we have discussed. When the piston is travelling from TDC to VDC, the frictional force will be acting, frictional force will always try to resist the piston movement. So, it will be always I mean uh, we have considered x direction which is directed from TDC to the BDC. So, when piston is you know uh, coming from TDC to BDC frictional force will be acting in the opposite direction that is from BDC to TDC. So, that will be plus now in this case when we talk about piston is now when the piston is traveling back from BDC to TDC frictional force will be acting in the opposite direction that is from TDC to BDC in that time FT will be positive. So, we can say uh, that uh, this FT that is the frictional force right and sign of this force will depend on the crank angle phi, crank angle phi and it will be negative. So, F t will be minus F t for when you know uh, phi less than 180 degree and greater than 0 degree and it will be F t simply when phi is less than 360 degree greater than 180 degree. So, this is the sign convention that we need to consider this is very simple straightforward, but at least we have understood the net force which is acting on the piston face and for which piston will have acceleration. Okay. This is the you know expression of the uh, force. Now, question is we also need to know the side force that is acting in the y direction. Although we know that there is no lateral you know movement because lateral movement is you know uh, you know controlled no lateral movement, lateral movement is almost 0. Uh, we cannot say it is exactly 0, but very small very small movement will be there, but that movement is will be you know uh, taken care by the uh, thrust bearing uh, radial thrust bearing, but, but uh, I mean uh, effectively there is no any acceleration in the radial direction. So, we need to know what are the you know uh, I mean uh, what the component. So, the force I am writing acting on the you know radial direction. So, for acting on the radial direction, if we say this is F y, let us say this is F y, then summation of F y will be definitely equal to 0 as I said we cannot make it ex exactly equal to 0 there will be slight you know uh, uh, movement, but that will be taken care by the radial thrust bearing, but we will not get any uh, uh, resultant force and there is no acceleration. And if we try to so this is our x direction. So, f y is equal to 0 that means f r sin theta minus F t that is equal to 0. So, frictional force will be there again I am telling. Uh, so, as it frictional force will be always there, but the this is the equation. So, now if I write, so this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. So, if I try to combine these two equations, we will get. So, combining equation 1 and 2. we get F t will be equal to minus del V p del t 
plus p into pi by 4 d square plus minus you know uh, uh, so I can write this is you know thrust force that uh, F t is the total thrust now this this will be I can say give a different name that is F F capital T. So, this F capital T is the you know uh, is the force which is not constant which is not constant frictional force will be there, but the frictional force is negligibly small uh, slight lateral movement will be there, but that movement will be you know uh, uh, seized by the radial thrust bearing, but but still we cannot ignore while are, we are calculating the net force acting on in the y direction. So, F t is the force which is not constant, but it will change with a change in the uh, you know uh, position piston position. So, this is uh, we can write this F t capital T and the magnitude of this force the magnitude of this force will depends on the crank angle theta phi phi that is position that is position of the piston. So, this is plus minus this F t that is frictional force into tan theta. So, if we write uh, if we have so this is uh, the side thrust we cannot thus this is the side thrust force. So, the F t this is the side thrust force this is the side thrust force. force uh, uh, that is y direction reaction that will be there y direction reaction to the force in the connecting rod to the force in the connecting rod. So, the information about this thrust force is thrust force is also an important also an important uh, um, uh, I mean quantity I can say from the perspective of engine design engine operation because we need to uh, have radial thrust bearing. So, the this estimation of this quantity will allow us to design the radial thrust bearing accordingly and this is essentially with the y direction reaction to the force in the connecting dot. So, the force will be acting on the connecting dot for which we will have a reaction and that is what we have calculated. Okay. What we have understood from this is that knowing this force actually we can calculate that uh, uh, this total force acting. So, the knowing the you know pressure that is developed inside the cylinder that we can obtain I cannot say that I will get it exactly from the TS and PV diagram, but at least we will get we will come to know the thermodynamic state pressure at the end of the combustion and from there uh, we that is up to, uh, that is represented by the constant volume heat addition and constant pressure heat addition in the CI and CI engines respectively. So, we can calculate the net force acting on the piston phase and from there we can calculate what will be, what will be the you know power available at the crank shaft because uh, the frictional losses and other things we know. Similarly, this force is also an important parameter to design the radial thrust bearing which is responsible which is responsible to kill the radial thrust that will be there because of the reaction to the force in the connecting dot. Now, we will see that uh, we have if we go back to the slide where we can see that frictional force is of course, very important uh, the frictional force in the radial direction 
uh, will be there, but that magnitude is non-trivial. I mean, th this is uh, magnitude is not. Uh, I mean, non-trivial. This is trivially small. Now, uh, when we talk about the net force in the x direction, we can see uh, in our, the frictional force is. Uh, I can say uh, frictional force plays an important role. So the frictional effect is having a significant role to play on the piston acceleration. So uh, we need to overcome, we cannot make the frictional force 0 otherwise we will not get any motion at, at least now, but we need to reduce the frictional effect essentially to, to maximize the power output and also uh, to save the piston as well as the cylinder wall uh, lifetime. So, we should know at least what are the possible sources from where this frictional force, frictional effect is coming. We have, we know from our, you know, undergraduate uh, knowledge that uh, when there is, you know, two surfaces are in contact, uh, of course, and when one is having relative motion to the other, then there will be frictional force. But our objective will be to reduce the frictional force essentially to have to maximize the power output and for that we need to supply lubricating oil. So, at least we should know now what are the you know you know uh, mechanic what is the mechanical friction how it is acting and 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 of course to prevent or to uh, reduce the I cannot make we cannot make it 0, but we can reduce the strength of the frictional resistance. So, we should know what is the mechanical friction and then accordingly we can select what what, would, what will be the lubricating oil and lubricating oil is required then again we need to know what are the different system through which we can supply lubricating oil in different parts of the engine cylinder. So, uh, now we will discuss about the mechanical friction. So, if I try to draw the schematic and that will help us to understand uh, from where this frictional effect is coming. So, if we try to draw, and say this is So, the piston is having movement, this is to and fro movement and this is the cylinder wall and so uh, force will be acting and because of which uh, this you know will be connecting with crank and this is connecting rod. So, this is connecting rod. So, what you can see that I can write that when to solid surface are in contact and uh, one of them is having relative motion to other, then frictional effect is important right. So, we can say that when two solid surfaces are in contact that is true for the internal combustion engines. Now, and one of them is having relative motion to other that is piston. So, this is piston which is moving relative to the cylinder wall and will have frictional effect. So, if we try to look at the system from the microscopic point of view. 
it is very difficult to have a solid surface which is I mean whose surface is a solid boundary solid substrate whose surface is atomistically smooth. So, we try to reduce the uh, roughness, we try to reduce the you know surface irregularities, but it is very difficult to make a surface which is atomistically smooth. So, there will be surface you know irregularities. So, we can say that if we consider any solid substrate, so surface irregularities will be there No, and and these surface irregularities are known as high points that in the microscopic. So macroscopically, you can call it smooth surface, but if we take the microscopic view, then we can say that I will see there are a few surface irregularities like this say this is point A, this is point B. Uh, so, A and B and these are known as the high points. So, these high points, so when piston is in contact with the surface, these high points are very prone to the piston face. So, uh, when the piston is moving a relative to the cylinder wall, then the high points will come into contact first and it will the high point high points will try to resist the piston motion. So, we understood we have understood that maybe we, we can call a surface is macroscopically smooth, but if we take the micro if we take the microscopic you know view then we will find that the surface is not atomistically smooth we will find surface irregularities and the surface irregularities are basically we can call them high points. So, in this system if we look at the schematic we can see there are two different high, high spots uh, we have identified high points. Now, when one surface is having relative motion to the other that is piston is moving relative to the cylinder wall then the cylinder the high points will be in contact with the piston. So, what will happen? So, but they are having relative movement. So, the point of contacts will be hot rather will become hot. Now, now I can say uh, piston will be in contact with the with these high spots high points and high points rather high points of contact will become hot definitely will become hot as piston starts moving. Right. So, the high points will try to you know offer resistance to the piston movement, but piston will move definitely because of these uh, external force which is acting that we have seen just now. But when there will be the relative motion of the piston or uh, movement of the piston related to the solid surface, the high points of the high points of contact will become hot as piston starts moving. Now, question is sometimes the high you know points melt together with the piston face. So, if the temperature rise becomes so high rather becomes higher rather relatively higher and if the temperature goes you know uh, beyond the critical limit then these high points will melt and they will weld together with the piston face. So, again I am writing 
this is very important the high points will melt and weld together together that is points will you know uh, weld with the piston now this is not the desirable situation for the engine operation of course so we have seen that high points will be there we cannot make them zero high points will try to create rather will create resistance to the piston movement but sometimes if the rise in temperature goes beyond the critical value then high points will melt and they will try to weld together with the piston face piston surface and that is not the desirable situation and we need to prevent them so what is done we need to supply lubricating oil so to prevent this undesirable effect lubrication oil that is lubricating system lubrication system is provided right that means we need to have lubrication system within the engine itself so that we can supply lubrication lubrication oil that means we can lubricate the system essentially to prevent the piston surface piston is very costly equipment and also it is not you know desirable that we should replace piston uh, frequently so to save the piston out of this un, uh, out of this excessive you know uh, i can say um, undesirable uh, process that is excessive rise in temperature uh, because of this welding effect between the hot high points with of the cylinder we need to supply uh, we need to provide proper lubrication and we need to know what what will be the lubricating oil properties when you are supply lubrication oil then how do they uh, you know uh, uh, save rather resist these kind of uh, welding or uh, melting phenomenon and also uh, i mean if we need to supply lubrication oil uh, between these two surface then what are what are the different systems uh, used typically used in the internal combustion engine so we should know now that so the provided and lubrication oil lubrication oil uh, reduces the resistance of surface to surface motion we need to spray the lubrication oil between the gap rather you can see if we try to go back to the previous slide that means we have to supply lubrication oil over here lubrication oil so the lubrication oil so this is the you know macros microscopic view not macroscopic so this is the lubrication oil so that means the lubrication oil will reduce will reduce or reduces the resistance resistance of surface to surface you know motion and motion and this lubricating oil lubricating oil is added by the lubrication system this is very important lubrication system to the space
between the surfaces. Right? So, that means when these two surfaces are of course, these two surfaces are will have relative motion, the lubrication oil will try to you know reduce the resistance and it is added between the space and not only that when one surface is moving. So, now question is coming what will be the lubrication system and what will be the you know uh, I can say um, what are the different ways by which we can supply lubrication lubricating oil into the or this you know uh, to the space between these two mating surface. At least I think I can tell one thing from this uh, from this point from this schematic depiction that piston movement is continuous. So, when piston is moving if I supply lubricating oil over here now when piston is moving from BDC to TDC or TDC to BDC the movement of the piston will try to drag some liquid because lubricating oil will have sufficient viscosity. So, the, uh, uh, the lubricating oil will be dragged by the piston movement itself. So, that is very important that that, uh, that piston movement itself itself uh, will drag the oil along the surface along the uh, cylinder wall. So, um, so this is uh, the important thing. We should discuss now what are the different lubrication system we should have at least uh, there are uh, a few uh, typical uh, lubrication systems which are used for the internal combustion engines. But, but we have understood that this lubrication system, lubrication system is very much essential very much required and we need to supply lubric, uh, lubricating oil properly. So, that it will reduce the frictional resistance between the two mating surfaces and, and, and to to you know complete this process we also need to know what are the important you know qualities the lubricating oil should have. So, now we should know what are the important characteristics or the important qualities of the lubricating oil. So, important characteristics of the lubricating oils. So, when we are selecting any oil for the lubrication purpose, uh, we need to know what are the important you know, qualities we should look for. Otherwise, maybe we can have lubrication, but that lubrication oil is only able to uh, serve the purpose uh, that we are looking for. So, um, what are the important uh, characteristics of the lubrication lubricating oils? Number one, that is, it must. That is what I was uh, I was telling. It must adhere to the solid surface. So it must adhere to the solid surface and. As I said that the movement of the piston will try to drag the oil along the cylinder wall. So, viscosity will play an important role for that. So, the properties of the lubricating oil should be selected accordingly. Now, uh, number 2 is it must resist being squeezed out between the surface. This is very important between the surfaces. Even during extreme forcing condition, when 
what is the meaning of this line? That means we have seen that the lubrication oil, uh, the lubricating oil is added in the space between two mating, mating surfaces. Now, the oil should have or the oil will be able to resist uh, the squeezing effect which may arise because of the forcing between these two mating surfaces. So, piston and the cylinder wall. So, between these two mating surface uh, we have seen that there will be uh, I mean you know there will be different forcings that we have understood today that we have uh, because of this connecting dot and position of the connecting dot there will be you know thrust force radial thrust force. So, radial thrust force that is you know radial movement of the piston is uh, controlled restricted by the cylinder wall. So, the cylinder wall will always encounters you know rather will always experience you know high uh, thrust high force. So, the gap which is now being filled by the lubricating oil should I mean that that, that lubricating, lubricating oil should not be squeezed out between the surface even the, the property should even be you know uh, active when extreme forcing condition you know arises. Number 3 is also important that very important that it it should not require I can say substantial force uh, force to shear the adjacent liquid layer. So, this is another important point say if I go back to the previous slide. So, let me explain uh, what is the meaning of this line. It should not require substantial force to share the adjacent liquid layer. So, if we now think that the gap between these two mating surfaces is very thin of the order of micrometer. Now, the gap is now filled by the lubricating oil. So, the lubricating oil which is closed the closed rather you know in the vicinity of the piston face of the cylinder wall that you know when the piston is moving. So, that shearing force will be you know percolated along the transverse direction of the fluid. So, that in the next fluid layer and from next fluid layer to the next to next fluid layer like this. So, it is the fact that that I mean to it it should not require substantial force to to shear the adjacent liquid layer. As I said that the movement of the piston is rather we will try to drag the lubricating oils uh, if it lubricating oil along the cylinder wall. Now, the question is if that shear force which is being produced by the movement of the piston is not you know sufficient to drag the liquid along the cylinder wall then again we will we'll have problem. That means, the point the important you know uh, parameter that is viscosity that is very important the viscosity is coming into the picture. That means, viscosity of the lubricating oil should be such that uh, it will the lubricant I mean I mean I mean the we do not require excessive force to drag the liquid to drag the lubricating oil from one place to other place. That means, the shear force shear force which is being developed which is being, being produced by the movement of the piston will be good enough to drag the liquid along the cylinder wall. So, these three are the important characteristics of the lubricating oil. Now, we will little bit discuss about. So, we have understood that frictional effect is there to reduce we can reduce the frictional effect we can minimize the frictional effect, but we cannot make it 0. So, we cannot completely eliminate it, but to reduce the frictional effect we need to supply lubricating oil and when we are supplying lubricating oil it is very difficult to supply lubricating oil uh, at every corner uh, or rather in the every corner of the uh, engine cylinder. So, what we need to know 
we have understood that the movement of the piston itself will try to drag the lubricating oil along the cylinder wall. Accordingly, we have to select the viscosity of the lubricating oil. But even then, we need to know what are the different lubrication system which are typically used for the internal combustion engines operation. So, now I will discuss about the lubrication system. for the internal combustion engines. So, at least we have understood the you know requirement of the lubrication system, but uh, now uh, we would like to see what are the different systems available to supply this lubricating oil into the different parts of the engine cylinder. And uh, for that we know there are three different system three different i can say three different systems are typically used number 1 Number 1 is known as splashing system, number 2 is pressurized lubricating system, number 3 is combination of these two. So, these three different lubricating lubrication systems are used for the internal combustion engine operation. What is splashing system? We should know what are the I mean ok we have understood these three different systems are available, but at least we should know little bit about this system and and and, and then uh, I mean we will come to know by how the system is able to supply lubricating oil uh, into the desired location. So, we will discuss about this splashing system. So, for the splashing system crankshaft crankshaft is used as the uh, reservoir so in this plus in this splashing system crankshaft is used as the reservoir or i can say used as the reservoir and the and the rotation of the crankshaft at high speed you know uh, in the oil So, reservoir that is oil sum, oil sum uh, distributes the lubrication uh, to the different to the uh, different moving parts. That means, 
that in this system we do not require any external pump, only the pumping action is done by the rotation of the crankshaft. So, if we try to recall that in the beginning in one of my the uh, in one of my previous classes, we have in fact, uh, when we have discussed about the engine nomenclature, we have you know seen that uh, oil bath, oil reservoir is there and by virtue of charming action, the crankshaft will try to distribute the lubrication oil to the different parts uh, of the engine, mo uh, different moving parts of the engine cylinder. So, this is Planck's plashing system, we do not require any external pump for the you know supply of lubrication oil, lubricating oil. Uh, to the to the engine cylinder. Second is, uh, um, second is the pressurized oil system. So second is pressurized oil system. So from the name itself, we can understand that. For this lubricate, lubrication system, we need to have one additional pump and that pump will try to you know distribute the not try the pump will distribute the lubricating oil to the different moving parts of the engine cylinder. And now uh, you may ask me a question that to run the pump again, we will try to we will try we will take energy from the uh, uh, power output by the engine and those are the parasitic load we have discussed in one of my in one of my previous classes. So, when that is the power produced at the crankshaft is not available at the you know, power produced at the you know piston phase is not available at the crankshaft because there are many other parasitic loads we need to overcome that is we need to run this pump a small pump will be used to supply lubricating oil to the different moving parts of the engine cylinder and to run the pump we will take energy from the uh, engine uh, flywheel and rather we will take from the power uh, that engine uh, the power to which is being developed by the engine. So, in the pressurized oil system an additional pump is used to supply pressurized oil to supply or to distribute pressurized oil to the moving parts through through the passes. passages built into the component this is very important to know. That means, if we know that this particular engine should have one pressurized lubrication system and we need to supply this lubricating oil uh, to the different parts. So, there will be passes and those passages will be you know designed will be developed while the component is you know uh, manufactured. So, this additional pump is responsible to distribute the pressurized lubrica lubricating oil to the moving parts through the passages which is built rather which are built uh, into the components. So, this is the pressurized oil system. So, we can see the difference between these two system is that splashing system we do not require any additional pump instead because of the you know rotation of the crankshaft. Uh, uh, we can distribute, we can rather it is distrib uh, the lubricating, lubricating oil is distributed whereas, for the pressurized oil system an additional pump is essential. But sometimes depending upon the requirement uh, the both the systems are used for uh, different engines and that is essentially depending upon the engine requirements and the engine uh, characteristics. So, to summarize today's discussion uh, we have uh, discuss about the different forces different forces acting on the piston acting on the engine cylinder and then we have discussed about that frictional force which is very important we cannot minimize it we cannot ma make it completely zero but we can minimize it so for that we need to supply lubricating oil and when we talk about this lubrication lubricating oil 
then we have understood why this frictional force is coming that is very important because substantial part of the power which is being developed by the engine will be reduced by the frictional effect rather will be reduced to overcome the frictional effect. So, we need to know the sources of this uh, particular force rather forcing factor and we have seen that uh, the that that when two mating surfaces are in contact. So, we cannot trivially make the you know we cannot make the surface trivially smooth. So, uh, you know, if we take the microscopic view we will find there are high points and we have understood in detail we have discussed in detail that the, because of this uh, surface irregularities frictional force effect will be there and for that we need to supply lubricating oil. And when we talk about lubricating oil, we have understood three different or three important characteristics and finally, we have tried to explain if we need to supply lubricating oil to the different moving parts of the engine cylinder, then what are the different system which are typically used in the internal combustion engine operation. So, with this I stop my discussion today and we will continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you.